Hello, and welcome to another edition of the John Brown Isekai, Ooh. read by the team of Heterochromedia Podcasts. Now, it's it's 10.30, and you know, it's been a, it's been a I day. would like to say that we've been recording for hours. That's not the truth at all. No, we... So, the last time you heard us was about a week ago. For us, that was actually about, like, four, five hours ago. Yeah, it was like... 4.30 probably, 5.30. Yeah, it, it's now 10.30, and well, the summit briefly, we decided we were going to go see the sites, and then go eat. Yeah. So our mission was, we'll go see a little history, we'll go get something to eat, and then we'll get some ice for the rum and coke. Yes. It, it, it's something very simple, like we were like, uh, an hour, <laughs> hour and a half at most. Yep, super easy. So, the, the battlefield was surprisingly pretty tame. Yeah, that was fine. No, no, fifth, no... 14,000 Union soldiers. I found some soldiers. cold fruits and I was throwing them around. Yeah, you were. You were. Yep, I was annoyed by Cannon and Mike. Yeah, you'll get no to see two. that in uh, Readout Productions uh, Trip Tapes uh, number three. And, and so that was easy. And then Route 340, which goes, it's the only major artery to get to and from Harper's Ferry. It is a horrible highway. It's pretty bad, yeah. And Look, we come I've from on some bad yeah. We come from Western Pennsylvania. Our infrastructure is shit. Pothole Central. You ever, you ever lose a car and a best friend in a pothole? It's yeah. happened all. We, of us. We've seen that. Yeah. So when we tell you that this is a horrible road system, we mean it. I, this rivals and might even top the Squirrel Hill tunnels in Pittsburgh, and that's that's saying something. The, apparently, uh, giant converted buses for whitewater rafting have a phobia of bridges. And speed. They go friggin' like five miles per hour. Yeah. And this guy on a tricycle in front of us was just like yeah, the throwing dude, his arms up. The dude up. on the trike was all pissed. And I was like, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I related. So if there was a dude on a trike traveling on 430 on... Uh, it's like August 19th. 2023 around 530 in the afternoon. At Harpers Ferry. We, we were behind you. We we feel ya. Yep. I, and I, I hope you we got where you were going. Safety. And I hope that you guys had a good evening because... Yeah, you you expressed the frustration we were all feeling. Yeah. So, and now this was after we'd already gone through downtown Harpers Ferry. Tried which was to, cool, actually. Yeah, we actually yeah. got to drive through downtown Harpers Ferry, which was cool to do. But there was no freaking parking because no. everybody was out. It's a Saturday night. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, fair enough. Saturday night. It's, it's nobody's necessarily fault. It's everybody has lives except us. Yep. And and then we tried to go to the famous Harpers Ferry Brewing. But there were so many people. So they shared this lot with an adventure center. Oh, my God. Which is just a bad layout. And in the chaos, uh, somehow I became lost. Yep. I became isolated on a hill. <laughs> yep. So yeah, You start going that way. I almost told you. I'm like, wait. And yeah, I was so I was like, we had to call an audible there? at that hour. We decided to evacuate. Yes. And the Bro, only way... it was way so freaking we're... loud. People yeah, were it was like, bad. <laughs> it it was... Was... I couldn't even hear myself. John Brown hear... was holding an oar. It was, it was bad. I had to plug my ears. I'm yeah, it was bad. Me. So we, I'm sure the beer and the food's great, but yeah. not on a Saturday night. Yeah. Maybe so. on like a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. 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 We could always make a day trip just to drink and... Oh yeah. yeah, why not? I don't, I don't, I don't know what we do. I don't know what we do after that, but I guess we have to get book a hotel. hotel. Six. Well, there's have a hotel just down the street. Yeah, so. there is. It's like a quiet inn. Or Quality inn. I actually yeah. that was where I stayed the first time I ever came as a little boy. It was a comfort inn then. So after this drama of us driving back and forth for three forty, so many we were starving. Yeah, I mean we yeah. were. We're like, I think this was pretty bad. And, oh my god. I mean we, there was no peach orchard to save us like in Gettysburg. I was. No. I was shaken. I was yeah, weird. you were. I, I think we were all pretty rough. I was having a seat. I was like, I couldn't move. <laughs> no, yeah. you're. Yeah, you nearly like slipped and imploded at one point. Yeah. When we were trying to come back up here. So, after that heroin experience, we decided. You know, you always hear these wonderful things about people saying you need to go out and try new things. Fuck F that, that noise. That. Uh, go well, to your the, local the, convenience store. The bubble store. is comfortable for a See, reason. Go to your local convenience store. Uh, buy a good 12-pack. Now, I will say, the state of Maryland, where the sheets we stopped and got our food at, which, by the way, the sheets was really good. Probably tastes really good because we were so starving. Yeah. And also, us Western Pennsylvanians love well, sheets. Well, we love sheets. Yeah, we inject that sheets. But this right is we not go a, there yeah. once a week. But I want to say that this is not a true sheet. Because uh -huh. a true sheets only exists in Pennsylvania. That's true. It's this is a Maryland place. sheets, and there were uh, some beers lacking. Yes, the, the, no Yingling. No Yingling. Oh, yeah, the humanity. Latrobe one, I was like... It's fine. <laughs> Friggin'. Yeah. Like, bajillion. There's bajillion. 
like Somerset got like three. Uh, that, that, that is really not doxing. I know. Yeah, it's one of many towns nearby that we travel through. And it's also 12,000 people, so. Somerset has. Now I live in the boonies. It's the size of Luxembourg. <laughs> <laughs> and, anyways. Point being, so they didn't have really good beer selection, but we got our food, and that's all that really matters. And they, yeah. we got the rum, we just needed the coke, and we did get the ice eventually. Yep. It's like Lord of the Rings. It, it really does. This is in Italy somewhere. We're looking at an image on the TV for Alexa. Show me comedy movies. And, <laughs> uh, it shows an I don't image think the two of some like ancient ruin. I look. We've been we've Almond been head. we've been drinking the past few hours to try to numb our pain. I had a tall and I margarita. think it's worked. Yeah, because I it's ten thirty, and we're about to just our quote is we're gonna drink until we drop. Yep, that's the plan. Now last night we drank pretty comfortably till we retire, and that was about midnight. So listen, I'm drinking till I, I'm like comfortably buzzed. A, because no, you're supposed to say comfortably numb. I know, but I don't want to be supposed to fit with the channel. You I just want to be numb. Though. I feel that. But listen, I feel that. I, feel that. I was thinking about how I felt the day after I got really drunk in Oregon, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, and I also want to mention before we continue, if for whatever reason, uh, the person who we're renting from comes in and wonders why one of the handles <gasps> on this desk is broken, we sincerely, honest to God, did not do anything. Dude, it, it was just sitting like in there, like. Basically, I moved something on the desk, and the handle just popped off one of the drawers. I didn't even touch it. I didn't even look at it. And we, we can't get back in. So for those that know, you now know. Yep. We're sorry. <laughs> the, yeah. We didn't do anything. We no, literally no. vibrated the floor. Yep. And it fucking came out. Yeah. Yep. So with all that rambling, that was the most rambling yet on these videos, by the way. That's we should, loose. It's quite an, quite an intro. We are going to the isekai that we were, we're all here for. We're on chapter four, right? Yep. Yes. Chapter we're on four, chapter four, 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 four. Which I have to get to. It's going to take a little while. Pangea. You and your Pangea. I love Pangea. Why did this supercontinent become this new TikTok trend? Uh, it's not a TikTok trend. But what is it? Why did, why did they make Obama and sometimes, I, wa sometimes I wake up with a word in my head and I have to say it so many times every day. But where do you learn it from? That's my question. This is a I mean, was, she is just a thing you I was learn about homeschooled. I, knew, I know like so much. Well, yeah, but that was like a while ago and this is now. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those intrusive thoughts things. Okay. Like you ever thought of something you haven't thought of in like what 10 years? What did Pangea do like, oh. to you? <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I like. You love Pangea. You love the entire. That's literally. That's like a new. It. That's a new way of saying you love the world. Mm -hmm. You love no. humanity. You can say you love Pangea. Well, that's because it's the. That's super my little continent. dark age edit right there. <laughs> oh God. Going from the continents and we back go to, Pangea. to the continents and then we go <laughs> Pangea spends word of God and it's like freaking Pangea and it's like. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, I've been I've been introduced to that this weekend and I I, I must say it's a, it's a bomb. It's sometimes it's very depressing. <laughs> also. This, this was found before the trip, by the way, and I forgot to show this meme to everybody. I don't care how nice the slave owners in your isekai anime are. I am not going to turn a blind eye to the fact that they're still slave owners. Yep, and that's Dan. Her yeah, show. from Dan vs. Dan Did you watch Dan vs.? Yes. A classic oh show. Oh my gosh, such a good show. That, frankly, should have been on, like, Adult Swim, and it wasn't. It was on, I wanted, it was on the hub. Well, the the, the freaking hub was yeah. last, didn't last that long. But that was, like, it, I love that show. Yeah. Oh boy, the way this chapter I don't care opens. Who you are. <laughs> chapter four, his turf, his turf is marching on. I know I, I said turf, but not true. Though. Yeah. But I was just, I was just living in the moment. You were. So yeah, I, I, I'm actually going to start this one. I'm going to give Connor a little bit of a break. Oh, thank you. I didn't say how long the break was going to be. A little bit. Okay. Break. Surprise me. So, welcome, folks, to all kinds. of and dimensions to the annual Curry Mountain Brawl. Ba, ba, da, ba. From the top of the cliff enters a new contender in this year's brawl. Give it up for Mr. John Brown from Connecticut. Wow. He has a special Woo. thing just prepared for this occasion, folks, and he's ready to spice up this year's contest. Oh, yeah! Standing at the bottom, staring at his rival, standing at the small cliffs is, bi is bipedal bear. <laughs> It is Boo. quite a disadvantage, for it has picked the low ground for this fight. This veteran in the mountains looks like it is not willing to give up its title this easily, however. His besieged old Brown is not intent on leaving. 
The contestants are staring at each other with killing intent the likes of which have probably been seen before, looking to see who'll strike first. Brown seems to be holding a helmet containing a boiling mixture of high concentrated lye. Damn. <laughs> What is the intent? Oh, by Jove, he's going straight for the eyes. Woo! Old Brown has gone from the forbidden chemical warfare technique, long banned by the Geneva Convention. Luckily for him, Geneva is not a city in Geeman plots. He has Oof. poured the burning liquid down from the cliff to the head of the bear, blinding his opponent. Woo! Chances aren't looking good for bipedal bear. Folks, it seems just to be running around wildly, trying to best to strike the opponent. Though, if Brown were to give it up his high ground, it could still be dangerous with sharp claws, folks. So don't tune out just yet. Old Brown seems to be planning to descend the cliff, perhaps looking to escape before the bipedal bear can notice him. Can he do it, folks? Can this new contender in the brawl earn a place at the top? Or will he become tonight's dinner? Wait a second, the bear is down. It slipped on a bar of soap that found its way onto the battlefield. What an unfortunate accident. Even Brown seems surprised by this predicament. It, it seems that the bear is not moving anymore. Oh, is shit. this the end of the road for the bear? One, two, three. Some numbers later. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten. That's a KO, folks. What an unexpected twist, folks. This year's champion of the annual Curry Mountain Brawl is John Brown. Yeah. And the crowd what, damn, what a way why, to... Why do I have a dissettling feeling that is not going to be the last use of chemical warfare in this series? You know, do we really need John Brown to figure out what chemical I, warfare is? Is the bear is? dead? I'm pretty sure the bear is dead. I, and Brown just... It, it, got so... its head, it got its head dissolved. Brown liberated that bear from existing. In the yeah. arms of an angel. Yeah. Rip. Rip bear. Like... Yep, rip bear. So moving twink, forward, twink, twink, twink. that this is your All right. story coming. Adventurers, the people that most stories about another world focus on, they are adventurous, as their job description implies. Brave folk who will stop at nothing and throw their lives on the line for fame and glory. From their ranks rise heroes, fiends, and everything in between. They protect common folk. They slay monsters and threaten the realm. They even go on an epic quest to fetch some red mahogany. Those would be the words that a layman would use to describe adventurers. A cramped room, a floor dirtied with unspeakable substances, and a mass of unwashed rowdy folks. Those would be the words that describe the adventurers of Azdave, or the adventurers of any faraway town in Gaiman Plots, for that matter. In a dank room sat a group of three around a round we table. We used to get apart. Ooh, nice. They have lines. <laughs> Drinking and smoking their hard-earned money away. Their sense of fashion resembled a renaissance fair, where no one in the crowd knew how human fashion worked in any era. Among the most atrocious of their crimes against fashion were the random bits of metal plate. None of these plates in a place that protected anything vital stuck through their, throughout their body. None of them wore a helmet and a bid to show off their overly pompous hair. For, as is stated in section titled The Rule of Cool in the Adventurer's Code, the most important thing for adventurers <laughs> isn't practicality or survivability. This there. is true. This is true. The most important thing is looking cool while doing your job. The conversation around the table was a dull one, consisting of bits and bobs about the adventurers, adventurers and other drudgeries. Uh, who would like to be this first voice? I guess I'll do it. I'll do the next one. <laughs> Shamazi! It's, it's been getting harder and harder to find mountain slimes nowadays. He had an older adventurer, chewing on some tobacco that had been imported from the east. He had a giant scar that traveled from the, top, the bottom to the top of his head. Most assumed that this scar must have been earned in honorable and glorious battle. In fact, he had earned the scar when he had dueled another adventurer in an argument about what portion of the loot they got to keep. I always end up finding useless slime corpses instead. This has been drying up lately. You didn't say Shakir, replied a younger man with great sarcasm in his voice. He had an assortment of scars, too, righteously earned when he was traveling through the treacherous realms of the client's thorn-infested backyard. The only piece of armor he wore was a small steel plate over his heart. It was fastened by two belts. The rest of his hairy chest was bare. Thankfully, or unfortunately, for those of the audience looking for fan service, he was wearing pants. He was he was slurping on some fine wine as he spoke. This is obviously the man bears waking up from hibernating. They're they'll calm down in like a week or two. Ah, uh, read out. He's probably right. Believe me, those things are vicious. Added the only woman in the group. <laughs> Shakira's lack of sensible. Her name is Shakira. Shakira's lack. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> you, got, you got to sing all your lines now. Oh. Uh, Shakira's lack of sensible clothing could only be matched by Shinase. Uh, you know that. 
Wait, so hold on. Oh, his name's Shakira. Okay, so you're Shinase. Who's Shinase? Her. No, you're Shinase. No, because you, 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 your first line was you don't say Shakira, so Shakira's the older guy. No, she... But she's playing the he and I'm playing the she. What? Yes. Wait, so what's my line? Um, uh, hold on. You never know? You, I mean, you know. No, so Spencer did that line. Okay, now it's my turn. Sha- Shakira grumbled... <laughs> yeah, Shakira grumpily grumbled at the thought of his comrade, who he hadn't seen for a while... Such a shame, too. That boy had one of those cheat skill things. He had a slave to boot. He shook his head, chewing his tobacco even more intensely. Such a shame. Such a shame. Shinasi shrugged. Eh, plenty of other world... world eh, plenty of other worlders. Shinasi's had a lot of drinks. End up yeah. in the mountains. We'll probably get a new one coming here eventually. <laughs> he chuckled and then added. If they, if they survive. Their conversation was cut short by someone entering the Adventurer's Guild building. Why don't I picture the Salty Spittoon? It's the Salty Spittoon. Yeah. Signaled by the bell on the door ringing. You, Shakira. Yep. Oh, Shakira? Yeah. Here comes another worldly now, said Shakira, watching a familiar figure enter the room. This figure was a young male, Ah Medakan, quite a common species of other worlder, who had been staying at Azdave for around a year or so. I see where this is going. <laughs> yes, he usually gave them easy yet well-paying quests to gather some ingredients. The adventurers were quite fond of him because of that. Today, unlike his usual calm self, the American seemed to be quite disturbed. He qu- quickly walked up to the counter where the guild's receptionist lay, barking something in broken, low gum and plotsish. Shakira tilted his head, trying to get a good view through the crowd in the guild. Young man has got one of his eyes covered in bandages. What happened? He received his answer as the receptionist rung the bell on her desk, signaling an emergency quest. Hear ye, gather round. This announcement from the receptionist caused a great excitement amongst the adventurers. Emergency quests tended to be profitable, after all. Adventurers of this guild, Sir Jacob Smith of Florida, has informed us of a great emergency. Please stand in an orderly manner as I relate to you the contents of your quest. And now we have the fall of the slave harem. Yeah, that's that's the yeah, that's, the, that's the break. That's the break. That's when we have to throw the the, bu- the bumper in. Yep. You the watch the Comedia. Tonight was a beautiful night, like any other. Moonlight shimmered on to puddles of water. Snow, no longer being in sight, as spring banished the last vestiges of winter. Flowers, hardly seen in the moonlight, sprung forth to welcome the new season. A cat girl was running from slavery, trying her best. Uh, to keep herself under the cover of darkness. The last few days have been hellish for I Mighty. Her old master wasn't the type to just lay down and accept losing a significantly valuable piece of property. The damn bull adventurers over at the guild have been hunting her down incessantly, keeping her on the run. She hadn't be able, been able to catch a wink or anything to eat. Her muscles, doing their best to keep her upright during the chase, ached like they were ripping apart from their seams. It didn't help that the mountains she had escaped to were still cold. The revealing maid outfit from the cafe did nothing to protect one from Mother Nature's chill embrace. I Mighty could easily see in the dark, like others were kind, but she had slowly started to lose focus and clarity in her sight as the night marched on. Suddenly, she tripped on a log that she hadn't paid attention to in her wild run. She found herself laid flat on the ground, the wet ground making her feel even colder than before. Struggle as she may, I Mighty was unable to lift herself anymore. This is it. Her vision fading, I Mighty found herself smiling during what might be the last moments of her admittedly short life. At least she was dying a free woman. That was what mattered in the end, I Mighty thought. Suck it, Jacob. Brown woke up, along with the first rays of sunshine visiting his cave. He groaned in pain, where he felt his back aching like he had been on the rack for the entire night. The old man had been forced to sleep on the floor of the cave for a few weeks now. As you might guess, the spite of someone entering his 60s didn't react well to having to spend the entire night laying on stone. Brown heard some concerning crackles come from his poor spine as he straightened himself. Thank our Heavenly Father above for keeping me alive for another day. Ow. Ow. Lord, help me. Ow. Brown winced once more as he tried to get up. His right arm being of no use, the wound that the bear inflicted had gotten awfully discolored. Yo. He was afraid that it might be infected. Having to amputate his own arm was definitely not going to be fun if that was the case. Finally managing to rise and shine after ten minutes, Brown made his way out of the cave to acquire food for the day. He'd have smelled the wet earth and the fresh smell of the blooming flowers if he hadn't placed the bear's hide next to the entrance. Brown and his father before had been tanners. 
So it wouldn't have been proper to let good Hyde go to waste. This is true. This is true. Uh, his tannery was in PA, wasn't it? Well, yeah, at one point. Yeah. Yeah. But we, you know, we, I partly want to go see the ruins, but the other hand, it's a pretty long drive into the middle of nowhere. For those Just that go don't, look at a stone foundation. Yeah, for those that don't know, and while I'm, you're probably hearing a bunch of noise because I'm trying to fix the microphone, it like flipped over. It's bothering me. Come on. Come on! Why aren't you working? Ow. Not the binder method. Not the binder method again. Not the binder method. The binder method. So anyways, as I'm causing untold amounts of pain to all of our audience. What? Does that sound better, guys? Hopefully that sounds better. It's kind of leaning toward me. It does. I don't want to... kind of want to be central. Doesn't. <laughs> or I doesn't. So yeah, the, the the ruins of John Brown's tannery, one of his many businesses that he owned, is actually he was an entrepreneur. Is actually in northwestern Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty. It's not. It's it, we can do it in a day trip. But do I really want to drive two hours to see stones in the woods? I mean, I've, I've I driven can, further for less. I can literally walk into my backyard and see that stones. Stones in the woods, like it's not so. That it's far one away. of them. We'll have to be up there doing something else. Yeah, it's like a side thing. We realize yeah. it's in the area. I mean, it feels like it's a rite of passage for us at this rate. We could crawl to the where the engine house used to be tomorrow. Pull a Niagara movement. Are we gonna? There's a stop, mar stop there's a marker there. in Chambers Farm where it was standing. Oh, I. It's, it's one of them. Oh. Kind of meme On the farm property? Yeah. yeah. Are we eventually going to end up in Kansas? Probably. Probably. <laughs> on Pottawatomie Creek? I think they preserve like one of his cabins out there. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. Which I'm actually I'm going to, going to Kansas next summer with my grandfather, so. Let's see? It's all working. It's, it's, all, all, it's, all, it's all part it's of the plan. plan. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. All right, Jess, I think you need to pick up. Where? Uh, finally managing to rise. Finally managing to rise and shine after 10 minutes. Brown made his way out of the cave to acquire food for the day. He'd have smelled the wet earth and the fresh smell of the blooming flowers if he hadn't placed the bear's hide next to the entrance. Oh, it's really dead. <laughs> <laughs> Brown and his father before had been tanners, so it wouldn't have been proper to let a good hide go to waste. The hide, stretched on a makeshift rack made of stray logs, smelled awful as it was covered in animal dung. Oh, Brown wow. hadn't covered the hide and dung just for the fun of it, as some might think. Covering <laughs> leather and dung was what helped it soften up, thanks to the bacteria found in the dung, unbeknownst to Brown. He planned today to begin tanning the leather using the tannin he had bought, ga he had gathered from the logs of pine trees from the forest below. Old Brown jumped down from the small cliff leading to his cave only to have his morning routine be interrupted by an unexpected visitor. Huh? Miss? Are you okay? Oh lord, help us! Brown rushed to greet his visitor. On the ground lay a woman of particularly, particularly short stature, unmoving and cold as if she were a corpse. Her dress had been dirty and torn greatly. Brown had to avert his, his gaze while approaching her to avoid seeing anything indecent. Her face was dirty, as her clothes. Beneath a layer of dirt and grime lay black skin with a slight tinge of crimson. Her hair was a light ginger, barely noticeable beneath a layer of mud, standing in stark contrast to her dark skin. Brown crouched down to get a better view, better view of her, and was relieved when he saw that his visitor was still breathing, even if only barely managing to do so. He, he used his uninjured arm to drag the young woman out of the mud, covering her with his coat so that she wouldn't expose any more to, be exposed anymore to the elements. Then he rushed back to his cave to quickly find something for her to eat and drink, his mind in a state of Get great worry the about the well-being of his guest. Yeah, hope I might. He likes the slime diet. It's good. It, it, that's all you get. I got soap. Slime. I got, it's got, I got soap. Slime. slime. It's got one abolitionist what abolitionist crave. Wouldn't he have bear meat too? Well, he's got he's got bear meat now. Well, bear meat's kind of greasy though. Yeah. He got barefoot soap. Barefoot soap. Yeah. Remember he got the soap. Yeah. He keeps using the shoe. <laughs> the shoe is a mold is clever. I like yeah. that. I quite like that. So, the brief offer note. Ah, 
Where would fantasy be without adventurers? Probably in a better place, honestly. Yeah, having a um, highly trained and traumatized mercenary cast just wandering around probably ain't the best for your culture, but eh. It makes for a good story. It does it make for a good story. Yeah. And that concludes chapter, chapter four. four. Chapter four. All right, we're getting into the juicy details. Come yeah, on. I Am Mighty and John Brown together yep. now. Finally, dynamic duo right yeah, there. Dynamic, dynamic duo is here. Yeah. This is it. This is the beginning. Final they're gonna, they're gonna destroy what what's the town of Zave or whatever. They're, they're gonna burn it down. As they should. Yep. Well, and Shakira, there's one good Shakira's thing. gonna be there. Brown is good at causing chaos. He is. He's he, not necessarily successful in winning that chaos, but but he's good at causing it. Yes. All right, I, I'm excited to continue. Yeah, I think we're gonna pause here so you yep. can wait, so we can save the juicy detail. Juicy? Why do I keep saying juicy? Well, weird. You really uh, like that that's word. a weird uh, yeah, adjective that you're using. Yeah. There. We'll do the next chapter next week. So until then, be sure to subscribe to the Heteroca Media Podcast so you're notified when the next part comes Very out. Very important. Uh, also, be sure to follow the story on Royal Road. Be sure to follow. We are not writing this. We are just merely reading this. Yes, we are just the humble... Uh, cabbage Preacher. Yeah, Cabbage Preacher is one of us. We're just the humble... Uh, what, we're just kind performers of, that are... That are, are we're are, like are abridged, humble. but like kind of scripted. Yeah. Yep, yeah. It, because we always add our own. Yeah, we, we, we add our own two cents and comments in, as one so, does. So, so go read the book, go read the book. Yep. Do it. And and then you can also support our individual projects, which I will put in the description below. Uh, I, we've shilled them for several weeks now, so... Yeah, they're, they're in the description. Honestly, you're and not Realistically, if you're mind. subscribed to Hedder or Kirby, you're, you're Kenny, probably at least... Harper's Ferry. Kenny, Harper's Ferry, and me talking about my channel. Yeah. I mean, well, you're missing Kenny and Harper's Ferry. That's, that's where... The yeah, but Kenny, what you do with your life. Fans right here. <laughs> but also, again, if you're subscribed to Heterochro Media, like you, you've it's at awesome. least looked at our chan our channels and our projects. Like, even if you don't follow, you've looked at them. And you're like, wow, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, do that. Support support the Cabbage Preacher. Support the, the podcast. S support our individual projects. Yeah, we're, we're going to get refills. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night.